fellow hams and YouTubers. I was going through my pile of collected stuff, looking for something to do, a project to work on. And uh, I pulled out this little MFJ 721. It's an, uh, a variable bandpass pass audio filter uh, designed to help with filtering uh, single sideband and CW signals in the audio stream coming out of the radio. So before DSP, this was the way you did it. If your radio didn't have a narrow filter, you'd filter at the audio stage. Now this one's been butchered. I forget where I got this. It was in a box of stuff somebody gave me. Um, it's quite old. Uh, this is one of MFJ's earlier products. In fact, I went out and downloaded the manual and I'll insert some shots from it here. It's typewritten. It's, it was written on a typewriter. And if you look at the schematic, um, I'll scroll down to the schematic, and you'll see that the schematic was hand-drawn, and they actually used a typewriter to write in the uh, labels and values on the schematic. So they, uh, they took the hand-drawn page, put it back in a typewriter, and, and did their best to position it so that they could type in the, uh, the numbers. I'll have to look the history up on this guy and see exactly when it was made, but it's, it's got to be one of their earliest products. Uh, what I'm thinking about doing with this thing is I'm thinking about building an L network tuner into this case. I'm not going to revive the filter. It's been butchered badly. Uh, there used to be a headphone jack up front here. There's a switch missing back here. I'm going to open it up and show you inside in a minute. So it's, it's been hacked. And really, you know, it's, it's just a bunch of cascaded operational amplifier um, audio bandpass filters is all it is. Uh, I'm interested in this switch, this multi-position switch for use in a tuner. If that is truly a, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine position switch. If I can use that to switch nine taps on a coil and put a variable capacitor on this side and somehow fit a coil in the back here of, of, of adequate size, I think I can uh, make a nice L network tuner inside this box. Um, so that's kind of my plan for this guy. Um, I'm going to build, well, this is an L network tuner that I made for another video that I built a <laughs> humongous style on this big plastic base so it could easily be visualized what was going on here. Um, this coil does not have to be this big, obviously. You can make it much smaller and much more dense. And uh, what I'll do is, is wind a new coil on uh, one inch, perhaps one inch PVC. And uh, it should fit inside this box. And this capacitor, I've already profiled it, this capacitor um, here will fit in here and, and can come out of this front hole. So mounting it might be tricky. I might have to make something. But hey, that's you know what the project's going to be fun is fabricating all that. But that'll be another video. I think this video, I'm just going to give you a good look at this old piece of MFJ gear. And we're going to open it up and we're going to look inside. We're going to look at the board. I'm going to do some disassembly anyway. So I might as well take the parts out and show you the uh, construction quality or lack thereof are uh, on an early MFJ. So let's open her up. Um, I do like the cases on the earlier MFJs, the way they put them together. They weren't as flimsy. The uh, later stuff was much more flimsy. Um, these, they actually have these plastic sides that, that make things more rigid with the metal panel that's underneath. And they have this little fake wood grain paneling on there. and uh, Two screws on the back and this top slides out. Look at that through those ridges slides out like a drawer and uh, we're in. There's the board inside. Now this <laughs> this is, uh, it's got pencil markings on it. Um, let's see if we can zoom in here. There we go. Hopefully we're getting enough light in there for you to see this. Now some of this wiring, this goes up to the front switch uh, somebody replaced the switch in the back, which let, let you select which radio input you were using with a switch up front and got rid of the headphone jack. And then we've got uh, 
some analog chips in here. I could look them up, but uh, one of them is going to be uh, an audio amplifier. Uh, another couple of them are going to be uh, op amps, uh, because the way this thing works is, is just uh, separate op amp filters that they switch in and switch out. I see a, bo a, a, a hack right there. There's a resistor paralleled across another resistor. So that was either a factory add-on, they uh, needed a different value in there, or somebody did a modification. <laughs> Um, yeah, so let's get this board out of here. To get the board out, I'm going to have to take the knobs off on the front, and there'll be nuts under here that hold this. It looks like that's just a brace. I'm going to take that brace out. The board's held in with a couple of screws back here, some wiring, and these two knobs, or these two nuts on, on the front, are going to be holding the front, the front of the switches. And the switches in there are just soldered to the board. I don't see any other screws, so that's all it's holding the front of it. So I think I can get the board out without disassembling the case. So I'm going to shut the camera off and work on that, and I'll be right back with you. Now, uh, I wanted to say something. I don't know. If, I don't remember if I said it on the last clip or not, but I know, I know there are a few of you out there that are watching this that are probably just shaking your fists and mad at me for tearing this thing apart. <laughs> it's, and it's, a, it's a piece of history, it's interesting old gear, it should be preserved, you should fix it and uh, put it to use. And You know, I, a lot of times, that's what I do is I fix old gear. But in this particular case, it's already been butchered. Um, it's really old technology, it's really simple technology. I have a DSP audio filter from Radio Shack that I'm using on my rig, so I really don't have a use for it. It's not going to be worth much for sale. Um, it, I think it's more interesting to me to take it apart and look at how it was made and the uh, quality or state of MFJ quality of the era and maybe give you guys a look at it, so I don't mind sacrificing this old piece of gear. It wasn't working anyway. Um, who knows, you know, maybe there's something burned out, maybe not. I'm just not going to bother with it. So, yeah, for those of you that uh, would rather see me preserve the MFJ, I am sorry that I'm tearing it down. And, uh, you know, feel free to berate me in the content comments if you want to, but it's my prerogative. I, I think I like the case more for this other project, and uh, I think it's more interesting to look at this board. I mean, look at, look at this board. Look... <laughs> Look at what they did here. Now, I don't know what the tape is there for. I think that was added by the modder. Yeah, because the modder put a switch in here that was tucked in between these. And if you look at these switches, I'll take his tape out of there. Okay. You can see how the outer part of these switches is exposed. Now he bent those down in order to get his switch to fit in there. So he put this tape in so the switch wouldn't short against those. That great big toggle switch he stuck on the front. So that was whoever modified this did that. But look at this board. Do you see the gunk that's on here? Let me find something I could point point with, but you probably already have seen it. Look at this this goo. And that's not moist, that's like epoxy or resin that's just dried on there. And it's around the edges too, so this board was definitely stuck in the case wet. <laughs> Maybe it had just been coated, hand coated with resin. Uh, with the typewritten manual, uh, I suspect that the underside of this is going to be a hand drawn etching. Oh yeah. Getting the camera, Kevin. There we go. Definitely a hand-drawn board. Look at that. With plenty of extra flux. Or resin, or whatever that is. Um, wow, there's some writing there. Hold on, let me get my glasses. Maybe we'll have a copyright date on here and we can identify the date. 19, that's a 7, 
78, I think. Copyright 19, it's either 78 or 79. It's, um, it's actually blobbed over with solder, but I can just make out MFJ Enterprises. So, 1978. Hand drawn and uh, definitely hand soldered. They were making these things completely by hand back then. So that's <laughs> that's the MFJ circuit board. How about that? Where's the writing? Yeah, it's right here. Right there is a 1978. On this side, we have lots of pencil markings. I think the pencil markings were written in by whoever was whoever owned this and was modifying it. Look at this capacitor. The lead, the original lead wasn't long enough, so they extended it to get it down to the board for this thousand mic cap. And then you see that one's a 470. Oh, there's a curiosity. 1978. Let's get the ESR meter out and see if these caps are any good. Or if they're starting to, to fail. So I've got my ESR meter, equivalent series resistance. I've talked about it before, but it uh, uses a, about a 2 to 300 millivolt AC signal at about 50 kilohertz. And what you do is you pass that through the cap. The circuit, the other rest of the circuit doesn't interfere with it. Zero, that's good. And zero, that's good, yeah. Well, they're, you know, only 1978. They're not that old, so they haven't uh, leaked. But the ESR meter just basically measures equivalent series resistance. An electrolytic cap, as it gets, as it gets old, will start to develop a, a series resistance and act like a resistor. So not much to the board. Real simple. Just a bunch of op amps as uh, audio filters. So that's inside the MFJ. The 1978 vintage... MFJ 721 uh, Super Selector. That's what they called it, the Super Selector. <laughs> audio uh, band, audio bandpass filters. All right, so moving on to the next phase of the project, I am going to start building antenna tuner components to fit in this case and figure out how to get that capacitor mounted in there. So that will be another video on... Uh, miniaturizing the uh, big old L network tuner into this case and uh, making a nice portable L network antenna tuner. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.